Hi everyone. Today in this video, we are going to discuss about diltiazem. What is this drug diltiazem? This drug belongs to the group of calcium channel blockers, commonly known as CCBs. We have few other drugs such as verapamil and nifedipine, which is having the suffix dipine. Similarly, other drugs like amlodipine, felodipine, all these are the calcium channel blockers. But here, verapamil belongs to one chemical category, phenyl alkylamines, and dipines are chemically dihydropyridine derivatives. And finally, diltiazem belongs to different chemical category. The chemical category of diltiazem can be identified by the suffix within the name of the drug. So here the suffix tiazem indicates this drug is having the thiazepine ring system. So this is a seven member ring system with one sulfur and one nitrogen. Now this thiazepine ring system is fused with benzene. So what are the ring system present in the diltiazem is benzothiazepine. So diltiazem is a benzothiazepine derivative. Verapamil is phenylalkylamine derivative. Nifedipine is dihydropyridine derivative. And even the selectivity towards the target muscle is also different. Verapamil is selectively acts on the cardiac muscle. Dihydropyridines mainly act on the vascular smooth muscle. Whereas diltiazem acts on both cardiac as well as vascular smooth muscle. So this can be observed with the prefix di which indicates it acts on both of the muscles such as cardiac and vascular smooth muscle. So diltiazem can act on the vascular smooth muscle so that it can produce vasodilatation and it can act on the cardiac muscle where it is going to reduce contraction. In this way diltiazem can act on both cardiac as well as vascular smooth muscle. So today in this video we are going to discuss about this diltiazem, how this drug acts, what are the important precautions, side effects and clinical use of this drug we will discuss in this video. Now, what are the clinical use of this diltiazem? Since this drug acts on the vascular smooth muscle, one of the clinical use of this drug is related with the vascular smooth muscle. So, this drug can be used in the treatment of hypertension where it can reduce the blood pressure by vasodilatation. Similarly, it can be used in the treatment of angina, particularly chronic stable angina. Diltiazem can be given where it is going to reduce the contraction of the heart. Thereby, it can reduce the cardiac oxygen consumption. When this oxygen consumption is reduced, cardiac work is reduced, thereby the symptoms of angina can be improved. In this way, diltiazem can be used in the treatment of hypertension as well as angina. Now, let us the chemical nature of this drug. So, this is the structure of diltiazem, and here you can observe 6 plus 7 member ring system. This is nothing but benzothiazepine. So, let us give the numbering. We can start the numbering from sulfur. So, numbering will be like this. Now, sulfur is at the first position and nitrogen is at the fifth position. So, this is nothing but 1,5-benzothiazepine ring system. So, this ring is nothing but 1,5-benzothiazepine. But this ring is attached with an ester at the third position. So, we can write this as 1,5-benzothiazepine, 3-I and this ester is formed by acetic acid. So, the suffix of the name will be acetate. So, simply Diltiazem is a 1,5-benzothiazepine-3-ile estate derivative. Now, we can easily identify the other side chains present at 2nd, 4th and 5th position. 5th position is having a ethyl amino side chain which is substituted with the methyl groups. So, 5-2-dimethyl amino ethyl. Similarly, 2nd position is having the phenyl group with para portion methoxy group. So, we can write this as 2 dash 4 methoxyphenyl and fourth position keto group is there so 4 oxo and saturation is present at second and third position so 2 3 dihydro so that is a complete name of diltiazem now let us see how this drug acts so one of the site of action of diltiazem is on the heart the cardiac membrane is expressed with so many types of voltage gated ion channels among these voltage gated calcium channels play an important role in cardiac contraction so, when these cardiac cells are depolarized, calcium can enter through these voltage gated calcium channels into the cardiac membrane where they can stimulate the calcium stores within the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So, this sarcoplasmic reticulum is expressed with rhinodine receptors. Now, the calcium can bind to these rhinodine receptors 
such that it can release a large amount of calcium from sarcoplasmic reticulum. Now, intracellular calcium levels are raised within the cardiac membrane. This calcium can then bind to actin myosin filaments. The calcium can bind to this troponin complex such that it can remove the block and actin and myosin can slide on each other so that they can produce contraction of the cardiac muscle. In this way, calcium plays an important role in contraction of cardiac muscle. Now, diltiazem is a calcium channel blocker. It can block this voltage gated calcium channels such that it can prevent the contraction. And when the cardiac contraction is reduced, the cardiac work is also reduced so that the cardiac oxygen consumption is also reduced. In this way, it can reduce the oxygen demand in the patients with angina so that the anginal pain and chest congestion can be relieved by use of this diltiazem. Similarly, this drug can also act on the vascular smooth muscle where it can block the voltage gated calcium channels, thereby it can prevent the contraction of the vascular smooth muscle, leading to vasodilatation and decrease in the blood pressure. That's why diltiazem can be used in the treatment of hypertension as well as in the treatment of chronic stable angina. Now, what are the precautions? One of the important precautions of diltiazem is on the heart. So, this drug can act on the heart such that it can reduce the heart rate. And when the heart rate is going to be reduced, it can produce some bradycardia in the patients. Similarly, diltiazem can also inhibit the cardiac conduction. So, this diltiazem can block the voltage gated calcium channels on the cardiac cells as well as nodal cells. So, it can block the calcium mediated conduction at the AV node such that it can reduce the AV conduction atrioventricular conduction is going to be reduced by this diltiazem and when this atrioventricular conduction is reduced it can increase the risk of second degree or third degree heart block due to the decreased AV conduction ventricles are going to contract in a different way without any synchronization with the atria which results in the heart block either second degree or third degree heart block can be observed with increased dose of diltiazem and this is particularly important when this diltiazem is given with other drugs which again acts on the cardiovascular system. For instance, beta blockers, the drugs which are ending with the suffix olol such as metoprolol, etanolol, propranolol, timolol, acbutalol. All these drugs are the beta blockers. Similarly, drugs like desoxin, which is a cardiotonic. These drugs again act on the cardiovascular system. The beta blockers can reduce the heart rate and desoxin can reduce the AV conduction. So, when these drugs are combined with the diltiazem, they can further reduce the heart rate and AV conduction, resulting in the second degree or third degree heart block. So, care should be taken when these drugs are combined with this diltiazem. Similarly, another effect of diltiazem on the heart is that this drug can reduce the force of contraction, thereby it can increase the risk of heart failure in the patients. That's why all the calcium channel blockers such as verapamil, diltiazem, and dihydropyridines, all these calcium channel blockers are contraindicated in the heart failure because they reduce the force of contraction, which further deteriorates the symptoms of heart failure. Similarly, diltiazem can affect the liver and it can increase the hepatic injury. So, few of the liver enzymes are going to be elevated when this diltiazem is prescribed for longer periods. The serum alkaline phosphatase levels are increased, and lactate dehydrogenase (LDH) levels are increased which indicates some anaerobic conditions, lack of oxygen, and increased levels of ALT, alanine transaminase, and increased levels of AST, aspartate transaminase. All these enzyme levels are increased by use of diltiazem, which indicates some hepatic injury. So, with this hepatic injury, we can observe few of the symptoms such as fatigue, some nausea, abdominal pain, dark colored urine, even elevated levels of bilirubin resulting in the jaundice. All this can be observed because of hepatic injury produced by diltiazem when this drug is prescribed for longer periods at very high dose. Similarly, diltiazem can also produce few of the hypersensitive reactions and rarely it can produce one of the fatal hypersensitive reactions, Stevens-Johnson syndrome and even it can precipitate toxic epidermal necrolysis. These are the rare hypersensitive reactions that can be observed in few of the patients. What are the side effects? 
The important side effects of diltiazem are mainly related with central nervous system, cardiac system and gastrointestinal system. So it can produce some dizziness in the patients. It can reduce the heart rate resulting in the bradycardia. It can also produce some fatigue. And edemic conditions can be produced by this diltiazem because of vasodilatation. So it can produce some lower limb edema. Decreased AV conduction result in the atrioventricular block. And it can also produce some cough angioedema, swelling of face and lips, some skin rashes, allergic reactions, hemolytic anemia and myopathy, muscle damage and muscle pain and finally it can also produce some gingival hyperplasia, proliferation of the gums, all these are the side effects possible with this diltiazem. How it is given? This drug is available as tablet form and also available as extended release tablets, even IV solution. The dose of the drug depends on the type of clinical indication and other factors related with the patient. For the treatment of hypertension, it can be given at any initial dose of 180 to 240 mg given once daily. The maximum dose that can be used is 540 mg given once daily. But in case of angina, the dose is somewhat reduced. Initial dose is given at 180 mg once daily. But the maximum dose is 360 mg given once daily. Because as the dose is increased, it can reduce the cardiac contraction as well as it can also reduce the AV conduction, which may further increase heart block, which is fatal to the patient. That's why the maximum dose is 360 mg given once daily. So that's about this drug diltiazem, which is a calcium channel blocker belonging to the chemical category of benzothiazepines. This drug is selective for both cardiac as well as vascular smooth muscle. So it acts on the cardiac muscle thereby it can reduce the cardiac oxygen consumption and it acts on the vascular smooth muscle thereby it produces vasodilatation resulting in the decrease in the blood pressure. That's why this drug is used in the treatment of chronic stable angina as well as for the treatment of hypertension in the patients. Bradycardia, risk of heart failure, and increased risk of heart block are the important precautions and it can also precipitate the liver injury when it is used for longer periods and this drug should be carefully combined with other drugs which suppress the cardiac activity. So that's about this drug diltiazem. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video please subscribe to our channel, share this video with your friends, push your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.